Hey kids, here is your math video for lesson two, homework in Eureka Math, grade five. Let's jump right in to quickly remembering what are we doing here. We are going to be working with the same concept for lessons one and two. It's about multiplying and dividing by 10, 100, or 1,000 so that you understand that if you multiply, the digits are shifting to the left and the number of zeros will indicate the number of shifts. One zero, one shift. Two zeros, two shifts, three zeros, three shifts. Multiplying makes bigger numbers, generally speaking, when we multiply by 10, 100, or 1,000, and our whole numbers. And then dividing, same thing, we're gonna be shifting those digits to the right. And so the number of zeros is gonna indicate the number of shifts, one, zero, one shift, two zeros, two shifts, three zeros, three shifts. Dividing is going to shift our digits to the right. So that's kind of a quick review. If you see in your book, you should probably be somewhere around page 11, I suppose, lesson two. Let's jump right in. So if I already have 36,000, and I'm going to multiply it by 10. That means I'm going to shift 36,000 to the left. If three is already in the 10,000s place, it will then be in the 100,000s place. If you put in these little lines below where you're going to write, it can kind of help you realize I have to fill in the blanks. The decimal is gonna be here at the end. The decimal indicates the last place next to the ones, anything after that would be fractions, and we don't have any decimal here, which is understanding, you should understand that this is then the ones place, okay? So if I have 36,000 and now this has to shift into the hundred thousands, then every other digit has to stick with it, so the six has to be right next to that, and then we have three zeros, one, two, three, and then this. That's the little part where you have to recognize you have to do something new by adding a zero on. Okay, so the value of the three has shifted by 10 times, so has every other digit, so that now we have instead of a five digit number, we have a six digit number. So these little blank lines will help you to kind of fill it in. Let's do another one. This time, instead of doing multiplication, we're doing division. Now that should tell you that my shift is gonna be to the right, just like I said in the warmup. So 36,000 is gonna go shifting this way. The three in the 10,000s is gonna go shifting to a smaller place value position, one-tenth the size of the 10,000s place. So that means I'm gonna be here in the thousands place. The three comes first, the six still is to the right of it, and then we have two zeros. So kids will say, well, what happens to this one? Well, it's still there, it's just on the other side of the decimal. Now, when you have only zeros on the right side of the decimal, you really don't have to write that. 3,600 is equivalent to 3,600 and zero tenths. So people don't wanna have like extra zeros if you don't have to have them. So we just don't write those if they're hanging off after this and there's only a zero there, okay? So 4.3 times 10, multiplication, gonna shift left and by how many? One zero. So 4.3, is going to shift left so that the four goes into the tens place and the three goes into the ones. 4.3 divided by 10 is one shift to the right because division means make it smaller and by how many? By one place. So if the four is going to go from the ones place to a smaller place value position, that means it's going to the tenths place. And if I have a four in the tenths place and nothing else, generally you will see in this book, they will always have a zero for the whole number value. It's just gonna be 0.43, okay? As you grow up, sometimes you might drop this off 
and just put 0.43, but for consistency in this book, and I will usually try to get that right, I'll have a 0 0.43 up to the top. Note the sign and how many zeros. We're multiplying n by two zeros. That means this is a shift left with your digits and two place value positions. Now, also in my class, we talked about what do I do? What is this? Um, and I've had students say it in the past. Why don't you just move the decimal? Okay. So if you really understand what's happening with the digits, then when you place the decimal, all of a sudden, all of your place value digits have been lined up. So when I see that I'm multiplying, that means my digits shift left. The two in the ones place is going to go tens, hundreds. So I have two in the hundreds, four in the tens, and I will have to add the zero because I have to fill in all the place value positions up to the decimal. Other students will say, oh, you can just move the decimal to the right. So you go like this, one and then two. Now it's essentially the same thing. For consistency in these lessons, I kind of have to say shift the digits. But half the students are already thinking, move the decimal. But the problem is that students who are shifting the digits, they're moving left, and the decimal students are going to say, well, that's going right. And that's confusing, OK? A lot of kids will just get confused with that. So for consistency, just shift the digits to the left, OK? Soon enough, we'll be moving the decimal all over the place to, uh, to write our numbers, OK? Now if I have 24 and I have to divide it, I'm making it smaller so the shift of the digits goes to the right and how many places it's going to be 3. So when I have 24 and I have 2 in the tens place, it's going to go to the ones, to the tenths, to the hundredths. So that's going to have the 0 0.024. I'm going to end up with 0 in the tenths place because I have 0 here. So I have to fill in all the place value positions on both sides of the decimal, okay, so that at least there's 0 ones and then I have 0 0.024. Let's do the next one 4.54 times 1,000. Multiplying means making the digits bigger by how many? By 3. 4 ones. So you're going to go tens, hundreds, thousands. So it's four, five, four. This is in the thousands place. Got to fill in with a zero to get to the decimal. So 4.54 then becomes 4,540. Next one, we're dividing. Digits will get smaller place value positions by how many? By two. So all this is going to shift over, okay? So you're going to end up with, instead of three thousands, it's going to go one, two. It's going to be three in the tens place. So look at the digits and then write them in order. Three, zero, four, five, four. And where's the three going to end up? In the tens place. So if you place your decimal here, now I have three in the tens place. Everything else is next to it as it should be, and it's in the proper place value position in the tens. Okay, so it's a lot going on here. Let's do another one. Uh, number two, find the products. Basically, we're doing the same thing, except um, we don't have any decimals here. It's all whole numbers, so we're going to talk about what's happening here. If I have a multiplication problem, I'm shifting left by one zero. So instead of 14,000, I'm going to have 100,000, four ten thousands, five one thousands, six zero, and then fill in that last place value position. So you have to add a zero here. If I have the same starting number, but I'm multiplying by 100, that's two shifts left. So from this position, it's going to be one more, because this is already times 10. So it, it's like taking this and going times 10. So I'm going to take the one and the hundred thousands and go to the millions. Four, five, six, 
comma, every three positions, that's a new period, zero, zero, and you can't just leave two zeros, you have to fill in all the way to the decimal, okay? Same starting number, 14,560 times means shift left, how many places? Three places, F three places from here, but again, it's only one place from here. So look at the starting, three shifts from here, but I already did one shift here, one shift here, so it's gonna be one shift from here, one in the millions goes to the 10 millions. This is now in the one millions. Then I've got 560,000 and three zeros in the units period, okay? So explain how you decided on the number of zeros in the products for A, B, and C. So here, if we're um, looking at number two, the products for A, B, and C, as opposed to up here, then you're gonna be looking at what you used as your factor, okay? So if I'm using this as my starting point and I'm shifting it one time, or if I'm using this as my starting point and I'm shifting once here, twice here, and three times here, um, you can write however you decided to do it. I'm gonna explain how I used the previous product to be my starting point. Okay, so 14,560 times 10 is one shift left because of the one zero on 10. Okay, then use that product, this is what I did, for additional shifts. And if you want to write, uh, and I'm going to say left for each zero. And if you want to write that you took 14,560 times 100, so it was two shifts, you can do that. 14,560 times 1,000 is three shifts, you can write that. But this is what I did, so I want to write what I, uh, what I did and explain it properly. Next, we've got the back side. Not done yet. And we're going to find the quotients. That means the answer to a division problem. 16 and 5 tenths divided by 10. So first of all, division, we're going to be shifting the digits to the right by how many positions? Just the one. So the one in the tens place is going to go to the ones place, but the six and the five have to also stick together. So you're not separating, you're not inserting any zeros, it has to stick together. 16.5 divided by 100 then is going to be dividing, so shifting to the right, and how many skips? We're gonna have two skips. So this is gonna shift not to the ones place, but to the tenths place. Okay, so explain how you decided. Now again, this is where you have to realize, what am I doing? Okay, first of all, division will shift digits Right, okay, that's really important that you know that. The number of shifts, the number of shifts, careful with your spelling, the number of shifts to the right matches the number of zeros. How many times have I said that now? Lots. So you should really understand it, okay? The number of zeros is going to match the number of shifts. Ted says that three tenths, I always like to write things down, take the word form and make it a number, multiplied by 100 equals 300 thousandths. Is he correct? Use the place value chart to explain your answer. Much like we did uh, on previous lessons, 
start with a little t-chart and like I said I'm going to have a line for my decimal so that it's not a full place value position with two lines where people will get confused. Make three positions to the right. These are the fractional numbers. One tenth, one one hundredth, one one thousandth. And then to the left we've got ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. I don't know how far we have to go. Let's check it out. Go to thousands to begin. And we have the number three tenths that we're multiplying. So this right here in row one, wow, that's a terrible line, but that's okay, is 0 0.3. Zero in the ones place, point on the decimal, three in the tenths place. We're gonna multiply it by 100. So if you multiply this, by 100, first of all, multiplication shifts digits to the left, and by 100 means two shifts. So this would be one, two. So you would end up with what? 30. He says it's 300 thousandths. So he went shift, shift, or sorry, he actually left it here and just put in the zeros so he made a mistake by tacking zeros onto the end and leaving the three in the tenths place. Well, if you leave the three in the tenths place, it still has the value three tenths. Let me show you. This is three hundred thousandths, but it's also three tenths. It still has the three in the tenths place. Nothing has changed, nothing has moved. So if you actually multiply 3 tenths by 100, you have to shift those digits. This is the correct answer. So for Ted, no, he is not correct. And then you can show with the place value chart that 30 is the correct answer. Finally, on the last one, Alaska has a land area of about, oh, there go the lights. Just like, just like old times. Ugh. It's so special. Um, the lights usually go out. If you're new, if you're a new subscriber, you get to enjoy the fun we have in here. And janitors walk in and people come in, the students come in because they forgot their lunch. Anyway, nobody yet. We'll see what else happens. Alaska has a land area of about 1,700,000 square kilometers. Florida has a land area one tenth the size of Alaska. What is the land area of Florida? So we need to find something that is one-tenth the number that they gave us for Alaska. So explain how you found your answer. I need one-tenth of. If I need a fractional unit of, that means I'm multiplying by one-tenth, but I'm also dividing by 10 as a whole. If I'm doing this, if I'm doing this, I am shifting to the right. How many shifts? One, because it says right here, one-tenth, one shift. So I'm gonna take 1,700,000. One and I'm going to divide by 10. And so you can set it up like so. And uh, we're gonna be shifting to the right one time which means this one in the millions will come over here. The seven stays next to it. We're just gonna eventually write these zeros and just drop off that last one that goes to the right of the decimal. And so the, uh, the land area of Florida, kilometers, you can write it out square like this, kilometers or sometimes people will do kilometers squared like that and that's fine too. So as long as you understand, you're shrinking it down one-tenth the size. This is your final answer. Click subscribe, come back. Hopefully I can help you with your homework this year. Take care, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.